Hello, I'm Jesse Hall, and uh, I'm farming over in eastern Kingsbury County. I currently live on my, would have been my mother's dad's place where she grew up years and years ago. I started farming back in about 1996. Dad gave up about 20 acres of land. That was kind of my start. And I, him and I have been farming together, you know, pretty much ever since until he's passing here about a year ago. Dad's basically the one that got our family started uh, no-tilling here back in 1988. He was friends with uh, Dr. Dwayne Beck. I live on the place here with my wife, Laura, and I got two wonderful kids, uh, my little boy, Caden, and my daughter, Hayden. Some of the land that we farm is quite hilly, and, and, it, and it's been farmed now, you know, since the 18, late 1800s, and a lot of those hills over the years, there's no topsoil left. That type of impact is something that we have to deal with right now. Whoever farms this land after me, whether it's my son or my daughter, I can eliminate some of the problems so that they don't have to deal with those problems later. At SDSU, I started part-time when I was 16 and 94, and I worked there basically full-time all the way through till 2014. And I had a lot of jobs over the years. My last job where I got into the soil health was with uh, Dr. Sexton. That, of course, I got in contact with, with Dwayne Beck, and then we were part of the SARE program, which is the Sustainable Agriculture Research and Education program, where we flew around the country and went to all these different soil health events. We would go to these meetings, but then we would come back to South Dakota and actually do the experiments, and then we would watch these experiments progress as the summer went by. And I have to admit, I was a little bit of a skeptic at first, but after seeing the difference that this makes, I was just sold on it and I brought it home to the farm. 1988 was, was the first year that we no-tilled, so 1987 essentially was, it was the very last year that we did tillage across the whole farm. And over the years, on the wet years particularly, we would really, really struggle with wet spots, you know, and, and we were bas basically a corn soybean rotation and occasionally we'd throw in an, an oat or a winter wheat or something like that, but, but it's predominantly corn soybean. Once we started our three-way rotation, a lot of those wet spots went away. Since we brought in this third crop, our corn and soybean yields have gone up significantly. Our infiltration rates have increased, and when you raise that oats, it also gives you a chance to diversify your modes of action on your herbicides. So the idea is to try and kind of cut down and like water hemp particularly. What I really like about oats is now we have an opportunity to cover crop in it and now the Jim and I are putting up fences and this way we can bring livestock back into the system is just another factor which is going to drive that soil health. It adds a level of profitability so here you're, you're raising a third crop that helps increase all the yields on all three crops then you turn around put a cover crop in it drive soil health then you can graze animals on it. You can't just, just start no-tilling in one year and cover crop and expect it stuff to just start work out and be perfect year one but after three years you're going to start seeing a difference and I would say within a three year span my my soybean yields probably went up three to five bushel an acre across the farm average in corn 10 to 12 and that's been pretty consistent sometimes the scariest part is just trying it so I guess my advice to somebody don't be afraid of it try it on a small scale when you do your experimentation, contact your NRCS personnel, talk to your SDSU Extension Service. They're the folks that can help you with that. Never be afraid to try something new. And if your kid has a new idea, give him a chance, let him try it out. You might learn something from him. 